Hey guys, how you doing? My name is Dave. I'm a Washington State uh, Certified Instructor. And today we want to show you guys how to do the pre-trip, right? It's uh, one of those things that everybody's a little scared of, uh, but it's not impossible, right? You guys can learn it fairly quick with a little bit of dedication and dedicating time to that pre-trip, right? So today we're going to start with uh, our light check, all right? And my cameraman here, he's going to be my, my, you know, my examiner. So... Mr. Examiner, please, uh, if you can move to the front of the truck, I'm going to go inside and we're going to check uh, all of our lights. Clearance lights. Headlights. High beams. Left turn signal. Right turn signal. Four-way flashers. Right, Mr. Examiner, please move to the rear of the truck. All right, that's the, fr that's the front. Now, my examiner is going to move to the rear of the truck. I already gave him the instruction, and he's going to go ahead and move. Rear of the truck. Tail lights. Left turn signal. Right turn signal. Brake lights. Four-way flashers. Right, Mr. Examiner, please move to the rear of the trailer. Left turn signal. Right turn signal. Brake lights. Tail lights. Four way flashers. All right, sir, please come inside the cab. All right, guys, so once you're done with your light check, then you're going to. Uh, the, the examiner is going to come inside the cap and uh, you guys are going to begin with your end cap and your air supply test. Air supply test being the first thing. So the first step, you know, he's in. You're going to say, well, Mr. Examiner, I'm going to go ahead and uh, begin with my air supply test. And in this case, it's an automatic vehicle. So my first step is going to be to go outside and chalk the wheels. So I will be right back. Make sure you close the door. If you don't close the door, you fail your test, all right? Now, guys, make sure you ensure you know where where the uh, uh, sort of, where you're testing, where's the grade, all right? If you're in a little bit of a hill, make sure you put it on the back of the tire. If you're a little bit going forward, put it in the front, all right? Because that can make a difference in between you passing and failing your test, all right? Alrighty, so now we're going to begin my second step of my air supply test. Uh, I'm going to conduct a safety start. In automatic trucks, I will press my service brake. I will ensure my truck is in neutral. I will also ensure that both my tractor and parking brake valves are engaged. Um, obviously, my key is going to be off at the moment. I will turn the key to the on position. ABS light turns on, then turns off, and I will start the truck. Now, I'm going to go ahead and pump my service brakes until my air is at 90 PSI. In this case, the truck is already below 90 PSI, so we don't have to worry. It's right here. This is my primary air gauge. Here's my secondary air gauge. Okay. All right. After you've done that, I'm going to go ahead and and, and uh, fast uh, idle the truck. I'm not going to go over a thousand RPMs. That way, we get to the air governor a lot quicker. The air governor should cut out in between 120 and 140 psi. All right, my air governor cut off at 120 PSI. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and begin preparing my truck for the next uh, three sets of tests. 
All right, I will press in my service brake. I will ensure my truck is in neutral. I will turn the key to the off position. I will then turn the key back to the on position. Now I'm going to release both my tractor and trailer brakes. Okay. At this point, the truck is not going to roll forward because well, we already put our truck blocks in the tire. All right. Cool. Now we're going to begin with the air leak test. All right. With the air leak test, I'm going to press my service brakes and I will not lose more than three PSI on a single vehicle or four PSI on a combination vehicle in one minute. So I'm going to begin. I'll press my service brakes. My PSI right now indicates is at approximately at 95 PSI approximately. 60 seconds start now. Hmm. 60 seconds are over. My primary air gauge still indicates 95 PSI. This combination vehicle have not lost more than four PSI in one minute. The combination vehicle passes the test. And now you can let go the, uh, the service brake. Do not let go of the service brakes until you say all of the information you gotta mention that I just said. Once you say everything, then you let go the service brake. All right, next test is gonna be the lower warning test. I will continue, uh, well, I will start pumping my service brakes until my lower warning light comes on uh, at or above 55 PSI. Here I go. All right, my lower warning light came on at 55 PSI. Lower warning light is working properly, all right? Next thing is going to be my both my par, uh, my parking brake valve test. My parking brake valve test. I will uh, continue pumping my service brakes until both my tractor and trailer brake valve pop out at approximately 40 uh, 40 psi. There I go. All right, my trailer brake valve pop out first. I will read my PSI and my PSI for my trailer uh, brake valve is approximately 25 PSI. Now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, continue pumping until my tractor parking brake pops out. All right, my tractor parking brake pop out at 20 PSI. Both my tractor and park, tractor and trailer parking brakes are working properly. All right, air supply system check complete. All right, I'm gonna conduct my cap check. I'm gonna do uh, a safety start. I'll press my service brakes. I'll make sure my truck is in neutral. I'll make sure, sure both my tractor, uh, tractor and trailer parking brakes are engaged. Turn the key on. ABS light turns on, then off. And now I'll start the engine. Air governor should cut out in between 120 and 140 PSI. I will be listening for it. Seat belt, securely mounted, working properly. Has no cuts or freights and adjusted properly for me. Fire extinguisher. It's fully charged, securely mounted, and it's up to date and it's by my seat. I have three reflective triangles on the side box or by my side. I have spare fuses on the overhead compartment. Mirrors. 
are clean, securely mounted, not damaged, not cracked. They're working properly and they're adjusted properly for me. Windows and windshield are clean, securely mounted, not damaged, not cracked, no illegal decals or nothing obstructed my view. Windshield wipers and washers, they're securely mounted, not damaged, and they're working properly. Windshield washers work properly. Everything operates smoothly. Heater and defroster. Heater working properly. Defroster working properly. Horns. City horns working properly. Air horn working properly. Dashboard light indicators. High beams working properly. Left turn signal working properly. Right turn signal working properly. Four way flashers working properly. Oil pressure gauge. Oil pressure is at normal range and warning lights are off. Gauge is working properly. Temperature gauge. Coolant temperature gauge is at normal operating range. Warning lights are off. Gauge is working properly. Voltmeter shows the battery is charging. Gauge is working properly. Air gauge. Both my primary and my secondary air gauge indicates air is rising to proper operating level. Gauges are working properly. I will wait for our governor to cut off between 120 and 140 PSI. My air governor cut off at 135 PSI. All right, guys, now we're going to go ahead and conduct our parking brake check. All right, it's pretty simple. We're going to make sure that both our tractor and parking. Uh, tractor and trailer parking brake can hold the truck individually when they are engaged All right i will begin by uh, testing my uh, tractor uh, parking brake i'm going to go ahead and uh, put my foot in the service brake i'll put my truck in gear i'm going to release my trailer parking brake and i will try to pull forward truck did not pull forward my tractor parking brake is working properly now I'm going to engage again my trailer parking brake place my truck in neutral I'm going to release my tractor parking brake now we're going to test the trailer parking brake I'll place my truck in gear and I will try to move forward. Truck did not move forward. Trailer parking brake is working properly. Now, I'm going to release both my tractor and trailer brake valve. My tractor uh, was already released, so that's good. Now I'm gonna move forward five to 10 feet with hands lightly on the wheel and I'm going to press my service brakes. We're going to be testing our service brakes. All right. Service brakes are uh, are working properly. Truck did not pull left or right when applying the service brakes. All right. So truck passes the test. I'm gonna go ahead and engage both my tractor and trailer parking brakes. Set my truck in neutral. Turn the truck off. And my in cap inspection is complete. Okay. Now we're gonna go outside. Light check. We're going to begin with our clearance lights, our headlights. They're clean and clear, proper color for the location. Our turn signals, 
right? We're checking the physical condition of the slides, all right? Physical, they're not cracked, not broken, right? They're not missing. I will continue on. My side marker light. I will inspect my clearance lights, I will, uh, trailer clearance lights. I will inspect my truck tail lights, truck turn signal lights, truck brake lights. If the trailer is equipped with a side marker light, then you can go ahead and mention that one too. You will be inspecting that one. In this case, this is a 28 footer. 28 footer doesn't have exactly a side marker light, all right? I will also inspect my trailer brake lights, my trailer uh, left and right turn signal, and I will also inspect my trailer identification lights. All of my lights are clean, not missing, not broken, proper color for the location. Reflective tape is present and affixed securely to the vehicle, all right? Reflectors are red and rear and amber elsewhere, all right? Trailer clearance lights and identification lights. They're red and rear, amber elsewhere. I was standing in front of the truck, all right? There are no leaks underneath the engine compartment. Truck is leaning to one side, which could indicate a suspension problem or low tire pressure, right? Now I'm gonna go ahead and open my hood. We're going to do our fluids, our coolant is above refill mark and can be checked at the side glass or by opening the radiator cap when the engine is cold, All right? Engine oil. We're going to check the oil level in the oil dipstick to make sure it's above the refill mark. All right? Our stream fluid. Power stream through a level is above refill mark, and I can check by using dipstick or side glass. All right, our components. We're gonna start with our belt. Belt is snug, not frayed, not cracked, not worn, and it deflects no more than half to three quarters of an inch when pull in the middle of the belt. Engine hoses and fittings. Engine hoses and fittings are securely mounted, not damaged, not worn, not leaking, not cut. Our alternator is belt driven working properly, not damaged, securely mounted. Alternator wires have no damage and are securely fastened, all right? Our air compressor is working properly, it's not damaged, not leaking, securely mounted, and it is gear driven. Our water pump, Water pump is gear driven, securely mounted. It's not damaged, it's not leaking, and it's working properly. This one actually is belt driven. Our steering, let's go back. Power steering unit, power steering pump. Our power steering pump is working properly, it's not leaking securely mounted is gear driven power steering box and hoses is securely mounted not leaking not missing nuts and bolts hoses and fittings are not damaged or leaking steering linkage the links arms out and rods from steering box 
to wheel are not worn, not cracked. Joints and sockets are not worn or loose. No loose or missing nuts, bolts, or cutter pins. Leaf springs mount, brackets and bushings, securely mounted, not damaged. No missing nuts or bolts or bushings. Lift springs and hangers. Not missing, not damaged, not cracked, not bent, and not shifted. U-bolts are securely mounted, not missing, not broken. Airbags, not damaged, not leaking, and no holes. Airbag mounts and brackets, securely mounted, not damaged, no missing bolts. Chuck absorbers, securely mounted, not damaged, not leaking. Brake hoses and lines are not cracked, not worn, not loose, not frayed. Hoses and lines can supply air. Fittings and couplings are securely mounted, not leaking. Brake chambers are not leaking, not cracked or dented. Securely mounted and there's no loose or missing clamps. Slack adjusters and push rods are not bent, not broken, no loose or missing parts. It's securely mounted and push rod should not move more than one inch with brakes released when pulled by hand, all right? Brake drums, there are no cracks or dents or holes, no loose or missing bolts, no contaminants such as debris, oil or grease. Brake linings or disc pads are not worn, dangerously thin, no contaminants such as oil, grease. We're going to do our wheel and rim. Our tires, tire is evenly worn, thread depth is at least 4 30 seconds of an inch, side walls and thread has no cuts, bulges or damages. And while we'll check inflation with the tire gauge, our rims are securely mounted, not damaged, not bent, and no welding repairs. My valve stem and cap are not damaged, not broken, not missing, and they're not leaking. My lock nuts, not missing, no missing lock nuts, no rust trails, no cracks or distortions coming from the bolt hole. All right, our hop oil seal is not leaking, securely mounted, oil level is adequate. I could check it in the hub, in the case of the hubs that have side glass. This one does not. My sight in the back of the truck, my mirrors, mirrors are securely mounted, not damaged, no loose fittings, free of uh, excessive uh, debris, all right, or dirt, okay? My doors, doors and hinges, they're not damaged, right? They're securely mounted, they open and close are properly, right? My door seal is intact, it's not damaged, and my window is clean with no damage, all right? My steps and my catwalk, they're solid, free of debris, and securely mounted to the tractor frame, all right? My fuel tank and my ca and cap, fuel tank and 
cap securely mounted, not leaking. Cap is tight, not leaking. And it's the same exact deal for our diff tank. Same words, okay? Our frame, it's not cracked, it's not broken, and no illegal welts, and no holes, all right? Cross members are not loose or missing. They're not bent, they're not broken, all right? Our drive shaft is not bent, not twisted or cracked. Your joints are securely mounted and free of foreign objects. Our splash guards right here. They're not damaged and they're securely mounted. Our exhaust system. This one is on the bottom of the truck. It's not damaged, not cracked, no holes, no severe dents. No signs of leaks, such as rust or carbon soot. No loose clamps and it's securely mounted. Our drive axle, I will check the leaf springs, mounts and brackets, our leaf springs and hangers, our U-bolts, chuck absorbers, bushings, brake hoses and lines, brake chambers and clamps, slack adjusters and push rods, brake drums and brake pads, tires, rims, valve stem and caps, and lug nuts on the drive axle the same way as I did on the steer axle, except my axle seals. My axle oil and grease is not leaking, okay? My tire thread dip on the drive tire is at least two thirty seconds of an inch. My torque arms and bushings are securely mounted, not damaged, which is a little difficult to see from here. My space between my tires, butt spacers are even, no damage, no foreign objects lodged in between my duals. My airbags, they're securely mounted, not damaged, not leaking, with no holes. Airbag mounts and brackets are securely mounted, not damaged, no missing bolts. My apron, apron is not broken, not cracked, not bent, no gap in between apron and fifth wheel. Skip plate, securely mounted, securely mounted to the platform, Properly lubricated. All bolts and pins are secure, not missing. Fifth wheel platform is securely mounted to the frame. No crack, not bent. Locking jaws. They're on the inside, they're locked in place, and they're fully securing the kingpin. Kingpin is not bent or damaged. Mounting bolt, no loose or mounting brackets, bolts or nuts, both the fifth wheel and slide mounts are securely mounted. Release arm, securely mounted, fully engaged, and safety latch is in place. Air and electrical lines, connections and truck and trailer, have no leaks, no damage, right? Air hoses and electrical lines and insulation is not cut, shaped, spliced, taped, or worn. They're not tangled, crimped, pinched, or dragging against tractor parts. Electrical conductors does not show through, right? Flat hands and electrical plug firmly seated locked in place and free of damage and no leaks. Bulkhead. Bulkhead is secure, not damaged, strong enough to hold the cargo, not cracked, not bulges, no missing rivets or holes. Landing gear. It's fully raised, no missing parts. Cranked handle is secure. Support frame and landing pads 
are not damaged. Okay? Our frame, not cracked or broken welds, no holes, no damage to the frame rails, no cracked, not bent, not broken or missing cross members. All right, no holes, no cracks on the box or the trailer floor. I will check the lift spring mounts and brackets, my lift springs and hangers, my U-bolts, my chuck absorbers, my butchins, brake hoses and lines, brake chambers and clamps, slack adjusters and push rods, brake dumps and brake pads, tires, rims, valve stems and caps, lug nuts. On the trailer axle, the same way as I did in the drive axle, except hop oil seal. The hop oil and grease is not leaking. Tire thread depth, the thread depth on the trailer axle is at least 2 30 seconds of an inch. All right. Torque arms and bushings, securely mounted, not damaged. Space between duels, the butt spacer, it's even, not damaged, no foreign objects, lodge in between the duels. Right? And if equipped, right, my airbags are securely mounted, not damaged, not leaking, with no holes. Right? Airbag uh, mounts and brackets are securely mounted. Not damaged, no missing bolts, All right? So remember this guys, you guys, uh, right now we're not getting inside the truck, but when you guys do your pre-trip, you don't have to necessarily get completely inside the truck. You can mention everything you need to mention from this position right here. Don't worry about sticking your body here in this cavity, all right? Uh, examiners know they're not gonna want you to get in there and get stuck and get hurt, all right? All right, let's continue. ABS light, not damaged, not missing, clean and proper color for the location. Goes on and off when checked. Mud flaps, not damaged, securely mounted. My back of trailer, doors and hinges, they open and close properly. I would check the right side of the trailer the same exact way I checked the left side, all right? This is my pre-trip inspection complete. All right, guys, so there you have it. When you say your pre-trip, take your time, all right? Don't go too fast, right? Be calm. Remember, examiners, they want you to pass. They are your friend, but they're not just going to give it to you, all right? So when you start doing your pre-trip, that is one of the first things you need to learn on the school hit it hard in your time here at school make sure when you go home in your free time dedicate some time to that to that pre-trip okay don't leave it for the last minute if you leave it for the last minute you're gonna have a hard time okay so with that being said I'm done my job is done here and I'm gonna head out take care